Hey guys, welcome back to Professor Saad Explains. Today I wanted to describe a neat way of describing tensors using dyadics that will simplify the vector operations on tensors that we often find when dealing with transport phenomena such as the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, if you recall my description of a tensor, tau, say, is equal to tau ij, we describe this as i being the index of the face, so x face or y face, and j being the direction in which the tensor is acting. So this component, for example, would be acting, this component a would be acting on an x face in the x direction. This would be tau xx or tau y1, 1, 1. And if this component is b, this would be acting on an x face in the y direction. Um, and this one would be acting on a y face in the x direction, and this one would be acting on a y face in the y direction. Okay? Um, now, just like vectors are written as, when you write the vector a, for example, you have axi plus ayj, or the vector u, you write it as ui plus vj. That it would be really neat if we could write tensors in this way so we can have a compact notation of the entire tensor without having to be confused about matrix representation of the tensor, how do you do the dot products. Oftentimes you will see the term divergence of the stress tensors like this or the convective tensor div u rho u. How do you operate on all of that? There's a really neat and simple way of doing this, and that is by using dyadics. Okay? Again, the same way that you would write a vector by using the unit vectors, so this would be ui plus vj, we can write a tensor, just notation, as tau is equal to um, tau xx i i plus tau xy i j plus tau y x j i plus tau z, sorry, y y j j. Now notice that this is just simply a notation. This doesn't mean that tau x x acts in a i i direction or i j direction like a 45 degree angle. No, it's not. This is simply saying um, that which this number here, this component here, is simply acting on an i face in the j direction. Now you might say, well, you have the indices here. Well, I'm having these indices because they just help me track which component belongs to what direction. But these indices do not con these indices themselves do not contain directional information. The directional information only comes through these unit vectors over here. I might as well write the tensor as a i i plus b i j plus c j i plus d j j. Then the only way you could know which component belongs to what, which number belongs to what direction combination, what face and direction, is by looking at this unit vector combo. So be very careful about that distinction. When we write tau xx, tau xy, tau yx, etc., these are descriptive subscripts, but in and of themselves, they do not contain this, um, this unit vector directional information. Now, once you write, once you accept that you can write a tensor like this, then it's a very easy thing to treat uh, divergence operations on the tensor as simply just distributive dot products. So if you treat the Nabla operator as a vector and then you treat the tensor with this dyadic notation, then you could do some really cool things. So for example, if you were to do the div tau, then you would write this as simply the dot product of d by dx i plus d by dy j dotted with, um, I'm going to do a i i plus b i j plus c j i plus d j j. Okay? And then you simply carry out the multiplication as if you're just doing dot products. So d by dx i dotted with a i i a. Now you simply do this dot product and then you apply this um, on this entire, um, on the entire term over here, okay? And because i, i are independent, are constant along x, etc., then it's just simply a matter, this turns into a simple dot product, dA by dx of i dot i, i, and i dot i is 1, so that gives you dA 
by dx i plus then you can continue with these operations d by dx i dot i so that gives you plus db by dx j and then i dot j is zero i dot j is zero j dot i is zero j dot i is zero then j dot j so we get plus dc by dy j i plus d d by dy j because j dot j is one and that's how you carry out these operations now when you are in curvilinear coordinates, you can do the same procedure. You would have ER, E theta, and EZ, but then you would have to be careful that when you, you are applying these derivatives, um, these derivatives on the unit vectors, because the unit vectors, they change with the angle, for example, ER changes as the, uh, with, with theta, and so does theta. E theta, it changes with theta. So you have to be very careful as you apply these derivatives because you would have to apply them on the unit vectors themselves. I hope this helps, and I'll see you again in another video.